Mark Koch was just 12 years old when he watched an American fighter plane crash on his family's land in northern France. And when it happened, when the plane fell, there were still bullets exploding. A P-47 Thunderbolt like this one plummeted to the ground nose first, creating a deep crater. It was about a week before D-Day. We heard a boom and then the flames. The flames were up to four or five meters high. The American pilot, Frank Fazica Sr., was killed. After government officials deemed the remains non-recoverable, the plane and the pilot were left there for over 70 years. The makeshift grave was eventually covered so they could farm again. Lieutenant Frank Fazekas was only 22 years old. He left behind a young wife and a six-month-old son, a son who is now 74 years old. You know, he kind of was, was my hero. I kind of placed him, I guess, on a pedestal in a sense. Uh, and wanted to emulate him. As a kid, Frank Fazekas Jr. studied his father's war letters. He would later become a military pilot like his dad, flying cargo planes in Vietnam. Because I'm named after him, and I, I used to try to sign my name the exact same way. The family always thought Fazekas was buried in a Belgian cemetery. After his wife died in 2012, their son wanted to scatter her ashes next to his father. But a call in 2015 changed everything. He said, I'm with the University of Wisconsin, and we know where your father's plane crashed, and his remains were never recovered. University of Wisconsin researchers were working on a new project with the Department of Defense to help find missing servicemen and women. More than 82,000 Americans remain missing from World War II and other conflicts. Using reconnaissance photographs, witness accounts, and ground-penetrating technology, researchers were able to pinpoint the site where Fazekas went down. Archaeological digs in 2016 and 2017 uncovered some of his remains, along with some machine guns and plane debris. When Fazekas Jr. visited the site in 2016, workers gave him a minute alone. Being at the last location that your that his dad had on Earth was, of course, very moving and emotional for him. He even ended up putting on gloves himself, finding parts of his father's plane. I'm thinking this possibly could have been off the control control stick. While in France, Fazekas Jr. met with a man who was present for his father's last moments, Marc Koch, who still lives about 300 feet from the crash site. I mean, it was like family almost. It was just, uh, uh, he and his wife were so gracious and uh, so warm and welcoming. It was just uh, amazing. And he, he was 12 years old. He, he, I mean, he, he gave me information that nobody else had. Nearly 75 years later, Frank Fazekas Sr. has finally returned home. He'll be buried at Arlington National Cemetery this month with his wife's ashes. I wanted to do this for him. I wanted to do this for my, for my mother. I wanted to see that he got the burial, the uh, honors that, uh, that he deserved. A son fulfilling his sense of duty to a father he only knew in photographs. Carrie Antelfinger, Associated Press.